I've got a question for Dr. Milikowski. Uh, doctor, do you have any personally know how many uh, physicians have been subjected to sham peer reviews? This is impossible to answer in an accurate fashion for the simple reason, as I mentioned at the beginning, is done in behind closed doors. But what is very important for the committee to realize is the following, and that is in detail in our analysis. The rainmakers, those physicians that produce a lot of income and protected by the hospitals, stop being protected the day there is some major uh, uproar in a news newspaper, if there's some major malpractice, something that becomes overwhelmingly problematic. And then there is a, a deal. The hospital offers those physicians to live quietly, or else they'll have to start investigating them and then they are reported. And as Dr. Grady just mentioned, they'll be not only reported to the state medical board by the National Petition at other bank, and they will fail to be able to be admitted in any hospital in the country. So what is happening is contrary to the letter and the intention and the spirit of the original law that intended to protect patients from bad physicians, it has been under the control of administration hospitals protecting the bad physicians. And such physicians today practice in Nevada, Mississippi, New York, they are not reported. The, below the radar. So I would estimate that when you do have a number of shampoo review, you'll have to multiply it by about 100. Let me tell you why. It is not a secret that I'm over $2 million in the red. It is now 10 years since November 16, 2000, when ETRMC uh, summarily without any merit or any legitimate foundation um, suspended my privileges. It happened to me at another hospital before. I've now gone through several hearings and um, out of those two were, actually I had three denials of hearings, which is totally unheard of. Why? Because I took the effort to document everything and make it public. And so for one Milikovsky case, you probably have a thousand. Not everybody is ready to fight, definitely not for 10 years. I never thought I would be sitting here today 10 years ago, because in my first conflict, confrontation in court, and I will not discuss anything in court since particularly uh, two laws under my name who say the opposite from one another are pending before the Supreme Court. <coughs> so I will not be able to discuss any of the litigation. But the fact is that it's far more than $100,000. Just one single hearing process, and my attorney is here actually, <laughs> cost me $100,000. And this was one hearing. So we have two, over 250 physicians uh, listed on our website nationwide. I would estimate, the estimate actually was done. It's about 10,000 physicians since 1986 when the Healthcare Quality Improvement Act provided uh, immunity to hospitals to do whatever they want. But this is a very, very low number. And so do you believe if it were removed from the hospital and an independent peer review, it would, it would lessen it? The, the Provi uh, provided we do not fall into another trap. The hospitals are ahead of us. They're already ready for adopting my idea of the black box and controlling it. So for instance, you take the largest law firm in the country called Horty and Springer. Officially on their website, they claim to represent over 500, 500 hospitals. In reality, they would probably represent over 5,000. They have an outside peer review company that if you did not know their own, you would think is unbiased, impartial, <laughs> without conflict of interest. And so this is why it cannot be private. It has to have full transparency and the black box that I envision would combine the jury pool idea and the double blind study. Well, how do we know if a drug is effective or not? We don't tell the physician and we don't tell the patient which pill actually contains the experimental drug. And as you know, if I tell you very convincingly, Senator McLeod, the pill I'm going to give you is going to save your life, I have 30% chance of success even if I just gave you a powder drug. And so in order to have no bias, no prejudice, no conflict of interest, or any type of discrimination. I'm not telling you which one is which, and I don't know which one is which. So my proposal is simple. Let's take all those charts, 
remove the name of the patient, remove the name, or remove the name of any identification of any healthcare provider, remove the name of physician, nurse, pharmacist, the name of the hospital, the name of the city and the state. What do I have now? I have a generic textbook medical case. We have 100,000 physicians licensed in the state of California. I will create a jury pool randomly selected the same way we do in a double blind study. And I will pull out a group of 15 or 11, an, an odd number of physicians, maybe one nurse, maybe an administrator, maybe a pharmacist, because after all, a patient is taken care of by a team. I will provide them that generic test, basically chart now, and I will give them 48 to 72 hours to provide me back their analysis. And every physician that is due, is, his duty is to participate in peer review in hospitals, and we know it doesn't work anymore. It's not broken, it's inexistent, it's a deception, it's a fraud. Instead of wasting time in something that is not doing anything that is helping the patient or reducing healthcare costs, we should have that peer review basically mandatory for every licensed physician in the state of California and get CME accreditation. Now, if in that jury pool that I create, I have a divided opinion, five against six, seven against eight, I know we have a problem. But if I have 11 versus 12, uh, 13, or if I have 14 versus 15, tell me the same thing, this black box will allow me to identify those physicians among them that either know something I don't, or they are a potential danger of falling into being the same trap. Originally, peer review was meant to be educational, so that if I do a mistake, Dr. Grady will learn about it, even though I'm a gynecologist and he's a heart surgeon. I was in a different field. But the whole purpose of education, that peer review would reduce errors and complications by the fact that we will learn from each other's mistakes, had completely disappeared. By establishing such a black box, which the Medical Board of California easily can do because it has the access to the 100,000, over 100,000 physicians, and at the most, a physician will probably once in three years would have a chart to review. I suggest to either pay basically the same thing those physicians as jury pools are paid. Presently, they're supposed to do it for no fee at all in the hospital. Anytime I was an active member of the staff, it was my duty to do it for three months every year. So I don't think that getting a few charts every three years is much of an effort to a stretch. And we would have a very cost-effective system. Then, obviously, the result of the black box needs an equivalent of the FAA, the Federal Aviation Agency, that can take a measure out right there. And either the medical board would do that, or an agency that I proposed actually to the governor a long time ago, and his staff, which is quite remarkable, is actually to merge all the licensing boards of physicians, nurses, pharmacists, tissue laboratories, and any other type of licensing that the California executive is providing into one single agency. Now, then you're going to have the equivalent of the FAA. The FAA has jurisdiction of mechanics, pilots, flight attendants, anyone <coughs> in the airline industry, including manufacturer. And then you, I think Dr. Anishtat would be very happy with the result. Thank you, Dr.